Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and today I am going to talk about the versatility of acrylics, and I will be showing you a demo of a butterfly that I did using various acrylic techniques. The first technique that you are seeing me use is airbrushing. This is something that I haven't done on my channel very often. I'm still fairly new at it. So you are actually kind of seeing me struggle through because I haven't done a full background like this with my airbrush. I have done various techniques with my airbrush, with my sky series, but nothing really to this full extent where I'm trying this bokeh kind of background. And to be honest, this background is even a unique kind of bokeh background than what I usually work with. So it's a little bit of a new look for me to try. And I knew that airbrushing would be the quickest, most efficient way for me to get the blurry look that I wanted. I do create bokeh backgrounds in acrylics all the time, but this particular piece just had this airy, light, beautiful, like, essence to it and I really want to be able to capture that and after practicing with my airbrush on my sky series I knew that the airbrush would be a great way to get the effect I was looking for however as I mentioned I'm still very new at it so I can't really give you any pointers because what you are seeing here is me kind of struggling through a little bit there were times when it clogged because I didn't mix my paint well enough because I was using a couple different paints. I am using mainly the High Flow Acrylics by Golden and the Fluid Acrylics by Golden. Both work well in the airbrush, but at times I had to mix colors together from both lines and I didn't mix it well enough and that's why the airbrush clogged. Otherwise, it normally wouldn't clog with those paints. That much I can tell you. I love those paints for that. And so I went through and I created that nice airy effect. I put in my blurry leaves. I came back with some white to make it even more airy. And then I came back to darken up some things using the same paint that I had mixed for my airbrush, but with a brush this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I apologize that the angles are kind of weird. I don't normally film when I'm at my easel. And so I have a really hard time finding a good angle on that. Normally you see me working on my drawing table where I have a better setup for filming. And that's where I am at now. So I want to talk a little bit more about acrylics in general. So I've been working with acrylics for over 20 years now, probably since I was a teenager. I taught myself with the apple barrel paints, which I have done a video on before. So I am used to working with thinner acrylics, which is one reason why I really like these golden fluid acrylics. But I also often work with Dela Rowney System 3 acrylics, which are kind of, they're akin to the Liquitex Basics, which I am also using here as well. They're more of a medium body acrylic. So when I'm painting with a brush, oftentimes I will use my medium body acrylics. However, the high flow acrylics and the fluid acrylics work really well with a brush as well because you can get really fine detail with them since they are so thin. So there are a few different kinds of acrylics out there. You have your heavy body, which are great for impasto techniques and to build up texture. It's similar to oil paint. They're your thicker bodied acrylics. They are high quality, but oftentimes they dry a little bit faster, I find. They don't work well for my techniques. I like to stay within the medium body range, which would be the Liquitex Basics and System 3 acrylics. There are a variety of thicknesses in acrylics that you can get. So you have your heavy body, you have your medium body, and then you have your kind of lightweight acrylics that tend to be thinner. You have acrylic inks, and there's also other forms like airbrush paints, which are tend to be thinner. I actually like... I've tried regular airbrush paints like Createx and they clogged my airbrush. So I don't really use those now. I just stick with my golden high flow acrylics for that. But and there's also acrylic inks, which work really well in an airbrush, but they work to get their, they're closer to ink, obviously the very inky consistency. So as I'm, I basically what I'm getting at is there are a variety of acrylics out there for a variety of techniques. Another form that they come in is markers. So you can actually get paint markers. A lot of you have heard of Posca pens and things like that. So I personally like to use the Liquitex Professional paint markers and the Pabio markers because they have light fast ratings. Now, usually 
these markers tend to be a little bit more graphic in nature and you're not necessarily going to be able to blend them out as easily as you will regular paint. And typically speaking, I use them for graphic things. However, I decided, you know what? I barely ever use my acrylic markers, so I want to bring them into this piece and see what I can do and see if I can incorporate them into a realism piece. And so you're going to see me do that here. And I am using, as I said, a combination between the Liquitex, which are my favorite markers so far. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of on those is that they only have a chisel nib, and I would like to see them do a bullet nib. And in fact, I'd like to see all these marker companies, these acrylic marker companies, come out with brush nibs. I have noticed a lot of them don't have brush nibs on them. I feel like that'd be really convenient for an acrylic marker so that you don't have to just work graphically. So... It's actually funny because I was watching a live stream by Lisa Clow the other day and I had already filmed this. Like I had already been using acrylic markers on this piece. Like the footage was done. I just hadn't done my voiceover yet. And it actually came up that she's not a huge fan of acrylic markers because they're so graphic and you can usually tell that a marker has been used. And I actually kind of had to laugh because I have always felt the same way, but I like to challenge myself and I'm home more. And I have a lot of art supplies that I bought markers, acrylic markers being one of them that I haven't used often enough. So I thought this would be a great time to experiment with those. So I always felt the same way. I always felt like they always just had to be used graphically. But after I used them in this piece, I realized that they are actually a lot more versatile than I thought. And they can be mixed well with regular paint and typical paint applications, such as with a brush. And you'll see me use them a lot more later on when it comes to painting the butterfly. But I do come in with them and do a few details on the flowers. But I, I'm using them in a combination with my paint on a paintbrush as well. I'm going back and forth. Another tool that you'll see me use in this is a Derwent paint pen. And that has a very fine nib on it. I don't remember the actual name of the paint pen. I will link everything in the description below. That was a lot more graphic. That came out a lot more graphic than the Liquitex or the Pabio. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Those paint pens. And so I wasn't as huge of a fan of those in this application, but I think that they would be great in graphic kinds of artwork that require, you know, lines and things like that. So I will talk more about that when you see me using them. But really, I wanted to create this video. Actually, initially, the reason why I decided to paint this painting to begin with is because I wanted to try the panel that it's on with acrylics. The panel that you see me using is an ampersand encaustic board. And you've seen me use this panel one other time. I used it when I did my casein painting of a pair and I love this panel so far and I want to try it with my typical paints so I already tried it with casein which was actually my first time using casein but I want to use it with acrylics and with oils so at some point I will try it with oils as well so a little bit more about this panel to be transparent this was sent to me as payment by ampersand for me letting them use one of my artworks in a training video however I am not sponsored by them or any other company mentioned so I want to try to paint on panels more often. So I've been trying different panels and that's why I decided to try paint on this. And so far, I absolutely love it. I will be using it more with acrylics. But acrylics in their versatility can go on pretty much anything. And that is something else that I love about acrylics. That is another way that they are really just easy to use. So here I am using those paint markers. Again, I chose these brands because they have light fast ratings on individual markers. And that is important to me because I want my artwork to be archival. And I am using them basically as an underlayer for these wings. And I am mixing titanium white from Liquitex, I believe cadmium yellow hue light from Liquitex, the Pabio in beige and that worked really well to get the yellow of those wings because I didn't have that perfect yellow in any of those markers. And now I am using that Derwent paint pen that I told you about. Feels a little bit more inky and it dries more of an inky to an inky consistency, a little bit shinier than the other paint pens that I used. And so I wasn't a huge fan of it. It definitely left marks that I wasn't a fan of. Um, 
it also leaked really easily and so I was worried to actually put it on my artwork when I had to prime it it leaked everywhere and caused a mess and I understand that because it's such a fine nib they probably had to thin down the paint quite a bit in order for it to come through that fine nib but I was really worried about it leaking on my artwork thankfully it didn't happen but I feel like it could have easily if I used it too extensively so I went through and ha had done some lines with that pen, but then I ended up coming through because they're so much darker than the Liquitex one. The Liquitex is a little bit more matte. I ended up coming through mostly with my Liquitex. And then later on, I will be painting over these black marks anyway because I want to add more color to them. Typically, I don't just go in straight with black, but I wanted to try these paint pens. I wanted to see what I could do with them because like I said, I have a tendency to buy a lot of art supplies and then I don't always have the time to use them and now I have the time and I want to see what these art supplies that I have laying around can do. So while I was doing my Sky series for my senior project for school, I had really started branching out with my acrylics to get all kinds of different effects. And that's what really made me think about a theme for this video. After I had done this piece and realized I had incorporated so many different aspects of acrylic painting into this one piece, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the versatility of acrylics. As I said, I've been working with acrylics for like 20 years, like since I was a teenager, but most of the time, because I was mainly self-taught, obviously, before I went to school, I just painted with them with a brush, the typical way that you would. It wasn't until a few years ago that I discovered airbrushing, and then because I love trying new art supplies so much, I really decided to start buying the paint pens, and I used the same acrylics for years and years and years as well. And so I just recently really started branching out and trying all these different kinds of acrylics, all these different bodies of acrylics and acrylic mediums as well. I didn't use any mediums in this, but I have been playing around a lot with gel medium and things like that when I did my sky series and just exploring things more. There are just so many avenues that you can take with acrylic painting. In this particular piece, you will see me using a myriad of techniques from obviously just regular painting. And as you saw, I used airbrushing and I used markers, but also within just like using my brush, I, I'll do some glazing. I will end up doing scraffito, which is where you scratch into the paint, which I'm not sure if that actually shows up on the video. I think that might have been while I was in between filming to scratch out a few details. You can do that when the paint is still wet. Um, because they dry so fast, it is so easy to just go over and fix your mistakes. And I did a lot of that in this piece because there's a lot of fine detail and it's a very small piece. It's only a five by seven. So while I was filming, there were times when I had a hard time getting close enough to the piece. And so you'll see me go back and forth to fix the detail quite a bit. Um, but it was easy to do because I could paint right over it the same day and, or, you know, just a few minutes later I could paint over my mistake because they dry so fast. So I also, I love to work things up in thin layers. So as I mentioned, there are times when I do some glazing. I don't use any medium when I do the glazing because I'm just doing a small amount of glazing. I just use a little bit of water. I often use water when I'm glazing. I've never had any issues with the kinds of paints that I use or any chipping or any problems. And... It's just very convenient. However, I do have some glazing medium. So if I had done this piece in black and white first and wanted to build it up through glazing that way, then I'd be more apt to use the glazing medium because I'd be using it over the whole piece and it just would be easier for me. So I'm using a liner brush to do the antenna or antennae. Um, it's the best way to get a very thin line. It's very, it's even thinner than that that Derwent paint pen that I had and I'm doing it in a way so that the light from behind kind of shows through because they're so thin that when there's light around them of course they're not going to show up fully a part of them will kind of blend in with the background and I just wanted to add to that dreaminess so I'm coming through with my liner brush and I'm doing the fine detail that way 
and darkening things up. And in the spots that are black in the stripes of the wings and in the parts of the body, you'll see that I'm mixing brown and some purple with it. And it can be kind of hard to tell from the viewing, but this just kind of gives me more of a natural black. I went over the wings with some purples and browns, bring those purples in from the lilacs and then the brown just from the, a good natural color. And their wings kind of look that way in the sunlight anyway. So I never just go in with full black. Even if I start off with a black base, I'm going to come through with color because I'm a huge fan of color. A lot of times I will mix my blacks using different... Um, usually I use, I think, Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue or Thalo Blue to get a nice earthy kind of black color. Um, but sometimes I'll use the colors that I already have in the composition to, to make a natural block, black that way. This time I used a lot of black because I wanted to try out those paint pens, but I'm really happy with the way it came out. And I learned a lot from this piece because I tried things I hadn't before. I tried my paint pens in a way that I hadn't before. I tried my airbrush in a way that I hadn't before. And even though I have been using acrylics for years, I feel like I am still making new discoveries about this medium. And that is something that I absolutely love about this medium. So I think that if you are somebody who has never tried acrylics, although I know a lot of people probably have at this point, it's worth looking into because there are so many different ways that you can use them. And I will, like I said, I will link everything in the description below. I'm just going in with those details and I'm using a lot of dry brushing when I use when I do these details as well because I don't want a solid line those in the veins of the wings it's really just kind of dotted broken lines and I found that just dragging my brush with more pigment and less water and making it a dry brush stroke gave me exactly what I needed because it just hit the tops of the texture of the panel and that's what created that dotted line. So that's another way that you can use acrylics. Dry brushing. And this was just so much fun because I explored so much. I was frustrated at times because I stepped outside of my comfort zone. There was a lot of swear words, a lot of colorful language, especially in the beginning when I was doing the airbrushing and my airbrush kept messing up on me. And it's intimidating trying new things, but I always recommend it because now I have techniques that I can use in my other acrylic artworks. I will definitely be using this panel more. As I mentioned, I plan on trying this panel for oil as well, which on the ampersand website says that you can do because you always want to make sure before you work in oil that you're working on a surface that is made to be used with oil. Whereas acrylic, you can pretty much put on anything. Okay, so here is the finished piece. I hope that you enjoyed this. This wasn't really much of a tutorial, but more of a way of me just talking about how much I love acrylics. This is going to be this week's painting of the week. So if you are interested in purchasing this original painting, I will have that linked in the description below. I also have prints available. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.